Next up, there are many varieties of caterpillars that feed on seedling corn. Those that sever the stem are frequently referred to as cutworms, and if their numbers are abundant, that could mean a significant reduction in plant stands and total yield. That's why Nebraska Extension has the cutworm pheromone trapping network to help determine the presence of different species. Market Journal's Bill Dodd has the story. For several weeks, pheromone traps have been dispersed to several locations in eastern Nebraska in order to track some particular spring migrant pests to the Cornhusker State. In short, cutworms. This system has proven useful in determining the occupation of different species in the area. While this network can't be used to make any treatment recommendations, the system has served as a reliable early warning system that can give producers sound indication they should be monitoring their fields. For the past several years, we've had a network in eastern Nebraska of uh, Nebraska Extension fac faculty who put out pheromone traps for several economically important moths. And these are species that don't overwinter in Nebraska, but have to migrate up each, each uh, spring. And so we monitor those to, to get a general idea of their presence and whether we should be directing our scouting efforts toward those species. Their, their densities can vary from year to year, and it varies somewhat on which way the wind blows in the spring, whether we get some of these and what, what's going on to the south of us too. Extension researchers are currently monitoring three different species, the true army worm, the black cutworm, and the variegated cutworm. However, Robert still stresses the importance of scouting for species that do overwinter in Nebraska and have the potential to invade other crops as well. We have several types of cutworms and other caterpillars that overwinter in Nebraska that don't migrate up each spring. And th th in some ways, those are more dangerous because they're partly grown caterpillars these other things like the black cutworm, they have to lay eggs in the spring and we have small caterpillars that start off and do a little bit of leaf feeding. And then when they get about half grown, they're big enough to cut through the stem of the, the corn plant and kill it. Uh, some of the other cutworm species that overwinter, uh, as soon as they become active and as soon as corn emerges, they can start cutting the plants and killing them. So the main, the main point is, regardless of what we see in our pheromone traps, growers should be checking their fields as corn emerges uh, for cutworms, other caterpillars, and other insects early in the spring here. Each different species will inevitably have an environment in which they are particularly suited to thrive. When scouting for these pests, it would be prudent to investigate in areas near fields that may be considered high risk for these species to multiply. Well, it, it varies by the type of cutworm. The black cutworm, when it comes up in the spring, likes to lay eggs in winter annual fields that have a lot of winter annual weeds or maybe crop residue uh, that, that they'll start off in. And then when we prepare the field to plant, we may terminate those weeds or till, and that drives the cutworms to start feeding on corn. Some other species may be attracted to, to grassy plants. Army worms are attracted to grassy plants to lay their eggs. So either small grains or possibly uh, grass cover crops could encourage army worms. And all, all these cutworms are, are never really widespread problems, but individual fields each year will have damage. So it's, it's not a major problem, but we can't predict too well which fields are gonna cause problems. Uh, so you really need to scout all your fields as corn emerges. Producers should also be scouting their fields once to twice a week as plants begin to emerge. But furthermore, when scouting your fields, there are definite telltale signs of infestation to be on the lookout for. Just look for early, early evidence of insect feeding. Some of these species are not active during the day, so really to find out what's going on, you may have to dig around the base of the plant. It's important to see what identify what species you have and how big they are. Can that, that can tell you how much longer they potentially can damage the crop. And then we have thresholds for all the cutworm species that if we have from three to 5% of the plants are cut at the base of the, the stem or at the soil level, and the, the, cut, the insects you find are an inch or more or less, that would be when you want to treat. When the caterpillars are getting over an inch, they're, they're getting toward the end of the life cycle and it may be too late to treat. Uh, and plus it's harder to kill big caterpillars. While research continues through the cutworm pheromone trapping network, 
Robert also emphasizes that there are a number of other pests to be vigilant of as your crop begins to emerge. When you're scouting as corn emerges, there are other insects like uh, wireworms and white grubs that can kill germinating, germinating seeds and you have poor stands. For those insects, we don't have post-plant treatments since they're in the soil. Uh, but the main decision is whether or not to replant at this time. And also in some cases for the wireworms and some white grubs uh, that have multi-year life cycles, those fields might be uh, watched for next year. And if you had problems this year, you likely have problems next year. Maybe think about control measures next year, uh, particularly if you're, gonna, if you're gonna plant back into corn. When working toward the goal of cutworm control, it's imperative to identify the problem early and keep a close eye on how the infestation is affecting your crop. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Bill Dobbs.